not as back where we started. Um, you see the way that the background is set up. I don't think it's sturdy enough to hold what I had back there before, like shirts and stuff. So um, we're just gonna move on from that. Anyways, hey guys, welcome back to my mental health series. I wanna thank you guys once again for watching up until this point. Today we're talking about depression, but before we get into episode nine, we're gonna get into our jam session. So I'll see you guys there. We just gotta move the chair out the way for real. That's all we're doing. You know, sometimes you just gotta roll with things and you know keep it moving. So that's what we're doing today. Hey guys, welcome to episode number nine. Every time I get to that part, I, I start talking slow. But welcome to episode number nine. Today we're talking all about depression, the symptoms, the risk factors, treatment options. Let's get into it right now. Starting now. The definition of depression is a common and serious medical illness that negatively affects how you feel, the way you think, and how you act. Depression can affect anyone, and no two people are affected the same way. Approximately one in six people will experience depression in their lifetimes. That's a statistic to hold on to. It's more prevalent in women than men. And when you're going through depression, it can lead to a variety of emotional and physical problems. And it can also decrease your ability to function at work and at home and to just live your everyday life. Now we're gonna talk about some of the symptoms of depression. The symptoms vary from mild to severe and they occur most of the day, almost every day. Loss of interest and pleasure in activities you once enjoyed. So if you just don't have that same passion, that same drive for things that you once loved, an increase in purposeless activity so if you notice yourself fidgeting and you can't really sit still or you notice yourself pacing back and forth a delay in your speech or your reaction time is, and this also must be observable by other people loss of energies even if you haven't done anything you just feel really tired you feel really sluggish not getting enough sleep or sleeping too much so along with loss of energy sometimes you know you sleep too much and you're like how am I still tired and I've slept all day you just don't ever feel like you are fully recovered or maybe you're not sleeping at all. So changes in appetite. So either you're losing weight or you're gaining weight and it's all unrelated to dieting. And I'm saying this as if you're looking at a friend or like a family member, but if you notice each time you see them, they start losing weight and it's not like a healthy loss of weight. It's more of like a forced, I don't know, like you can kind of tell what is healthy weight loss and what is not healthy weight loss. And if you feel like you don't really know, I wouldn't say you don't just come out and like ask if they're depressed. But at the same time, if multiple symptoms are showing up to definitely step in and say something. Another symptom is feeling worthless or feeling guilty. People feel guilty for things that they've done in the past or things that happened in the past and they tend to fixate on those things. So fixating on past failures and blaming yourself for things continuously is another symptom. Being anxious, getting very agitated very easily, unexplained physical problems like back pains or headaches, thoughts of death or suicide. The last symptom, and these are just to name 
same with you is difficulty concentrating and making decisions you may not have every single symptom that i just named but sometimes people just generally feel miserable and they really can't explain their feelings it has to last for longer than two weeks so if you just have a feeling of sadness for a day or two that doesn't mean you're depressed but if you're just generally feeling like nothing matters you every day is just a struggle and you should definitely get some help or help yourself and we're going to get into ways to help yourself and also other treatment options that are available for depression there's different depression symptoms that can be seen between teenagers children and adults in younger children some symptoms that you can look out for are sadness irritability worry aches and pains refusing to go to school not wanting to really do structured things being underweight and cleanliness is also another thing in teens some of the symptoms include sadness irritability feeling worthless being angry poor performance in school not really showing up to school feeling misunderstood and being really sensitive which a lot of teenagers go through using recreational drugs and alcohol to cope with issues eating too much sleeping too much look out for self-harm so if you see somebody is cutting themselves or taking pills and also avoiding social interaction so now I want to talk about the difference between grief and depression being sad and being depressed is not the same thing you can go through a period of sadness after you lose a loved one or after you go through a breakup because it's a change it's something that you have to adjust to so going through that period of adjustment and feeling sadness doesn't necessarily mean you're depressed if you're going through grief usually your sadness is intermixed with positive memories so, and it comes in waves so you may be sad 80% of the time but then that 20% of the time when you think of positive memories and you think of things that make you happy and kind of make you feel better when you're going through depression you are constantly feeling sad nothing in your mind kind of snaps you out of that feeling of sadness distinguishing between grief and depression can help you get the right help that you need get the right treatment and get the support that you need let's move on to the risk factors so like I said before depression can affect anyone but there are a few things that can make you more susceptible to becoming depressed so personal or family history of depression so if you had family members that went through depression or you went through depression before it's a chance that you'll go through it again knowing that can help you take the right steps to address it before it happens major life changes stress trauma certain physical illnesses and medications can make you more susceptible to becoming depressed biochemistry so some of the certain chemicals in your brain may contribute to depression personality too people who have low self-esteem people who get overwhelmed easily are more likely to experience depression your environment so what you're exposed to so if you're continuously exposed to violence you're neglected you went through abuse you lived in poverty those things make you more vulnerable to becoming depressed now we're going to talk about the treatments for depression and depression is amongst the most treatable mental illnesses and the earlier you begin treatment the more effective it is and almost all patients gain some kind of relief from their symptoms might not be from all of them but if you're consistent with the treatment you will gain some relief there are medications that you can get on for depression and they are antidepressants antidepressants are used to help modify the brain's chemistry and people typically see improvements within the first week or two of using them but full benefits may not be seen for another two to three months so consistency is key with everything psychotherapy and talk therapy is what they call it sometimes it is sometimes used by itself for mild moderate and severe depression but typically it's used along with antidepressants and also these therapy sessions can be individuals or it can be groups group therapy is typically used to bring people together with similar illnesses and just have them create a supportive environment where you can get other perspectives on how people cope and deal with similar situations that you are going through and in these therapy sessions you can typically see improvements after 10 to 15 sessions there's also cognitive behavioral therapy it's a form of therapy focused on problem solving in the present it's meant to help people recognize their negative thinking and it's meant to help them change their thoughts and behaviors to respond to things that you typically respond to negatively in a more positive way lastly there's electroconvulsive therapy which is commonly reserved for patients that are struggling with severe depression and who have not responded well to other treatments so electroconvulsive therapy involves a brief electrical stimulus 
stimulation of the brain while the patient is under anesthesia. So it's basically modifying your brain while you are not awake. I want to tell you guys that depression can begin at any age, but it typically starts in adulthood. So you don't have to be depressed to start therapy. You can start therapy before and develop coping skills so that if you do happen to go through a period of depression or you know, you're going through a tough life event, you have those coping skills already and you can put them to use. Depression in older adults can also co-occur with other serious illnesses like diabetes, cancer, heart disease, Parkinson's disease. I can never say that that's something to consider when you are getting the help that you need. That's about all I have for you guys on depression today. Thank you guys for watching. I apologize once again for the background. For the season's finale, the background playing like this, it's not going to happen. And if it does happen, it's not. It's not. It's really not. Remember that depression is treatable and you can get the help that you need. You. Why am I saying things like that? There's also ways to self-cope. Make sure that you're regularly exercising, you're eating healthy, you are practicing self-care, whether that's once a week, whether that's a hundred times a week. Make sure you're taking time to focus on yourself and know that you're going through depression and you can find the right resources to help you. And I'm here to help if you need that help. Thank you guys for watching episode nine. Make sure you guys shop and you get your Live Simply Free t-shirt or tank top. We have the tank top in black, yellow, blue. We have this in orange, green, purple. It's like, it's actually called lilac um, and navy. So make sure you guys buy your Live Simply Free t-shirts. And thanks guys for watching. I'll see you guys next episode. Wait, hold up. Is that a good way? Yeah? Yeah? Can you see it? You probably can't really see it. Peace out. I gotta go. Bye. What? We're watching it. I can't talk. Anyways, you alright? What am I talking about? I mean, what? The the, what? Ah! Oh my bad. I'm recording.